the Cardinals will ballot again later in the day. And Jeremy Bowen reports now on events so far today. St. Peter's Square filled up as the morning went on. Devout Catholics believe that the Holy Spirit guides the Cardinals when they're in the conclave. But they also accept that the Cardinals are humans who take time to make up their minds. So they waited. The Vatican says that the Cardinals will vote twice every morning and twice in the afternoon. All the people in the square had to go on was the fact that the first vote last night was inconclusive. Last night's vote uh, was um, a kind of taking a read of the room to see what the real strength of the various candidates were. And today it will be a kind of uh, filtering process to see how strong those coalitions are, what adds to those numbers and what may take away from them. Ever since he learned about papal conclaves at school, Joe Gregory from Manchester wanted to come to Rome to see one. It just gripped my imagination then and it stuck with me ever since that one day I wanted to be there during a conclave and hopefully I'll see white smoke. <laughs> and then smoke started coming out of the chimney in the roof of the Sistine Chapel. Just like last night, the smoke looked white and some of them thought they had a pope. The smoke kept on coming and it got thicker. He phoned his mother, who was watching it on TV, to see whether she thought it was black or white. No one's quite sure what colour the smoke is at the moment. Some people say it's black, some people say it's white. They're looking at the screen and they're looking at the chimney on the roof. They can't tell. But the smoke was black. No pope had been chosen. This afternoon, the Cardinals have two more chances to vote, and the people will be back here waiting for more smoke. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, in St. Peter's Square. So what are we to make, then, of the fact that there isn't a new pope yet after three rounds of balloting? And with me is Father Robert Sirico, president of the Acton Institute. And these early rounds, presumably, would have been essentially a barometer of Precise. the strength of the potential papal candidates and in particular perhaps Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger who's of course seen as a standard bearer for uh, conservative doctrine. Yes undoubtedly uh, I think by now they will have a good idea of the various uh, camps and potential compromise candidates. I think it's good to remember that in the past Pius XII was elected on three ballots, John Paul I on four ballots, Paul VI on five ballots, and John Paul II on eight ballots. Your, your sense of this, that Cardinal Ratzinger might still be seen as a, as a front runner, as much as the speculation has had it? Or not? I'm not even sure that Cardinal Ratzinger wanted the position. Uh, I, certainly his uh, speeches and homilies in the last few days, the last few weeks, uh, indicate that he was not seeking to please anybody on any uh, fronts that might not already agree with him. I think what he was attempting to do was demarcate the lines and uh, let people take their, their battle stations. I mean, we might assume, perhaps, that all the 115 men in there would actually like like to be uh, the Pope. Do you think that is the case? Uh, I don't think so at all. I think some of them are, are supposedly, uh, you know, ducking under the table, hoping they want to go back to their homes. When one becomes a Pope, your life is ended. A whole new life has to begin. And those who would accept it, that's why the John Paul II urged them, really consider accepting this. Don't be afraid of the enormous burden. I think some of them are humble men, prayerful men who want to be pastors to their local flocks. So no, uh, some on the margins, yes, but I think in general, not, not so. Do you think that in a way, the whole business of choosing a pope is becoming ever more complex? Presumably they're searching for somebody who can uh, speak to those in parts of the world where there is a fast rising standard of living, and that's not just uh, Western Europe and North right. America these days, and also to speak to those who live in absolute poverty, such as uh, 
such as uh, sub-Saharan Africa, for example, to be a, a voice for faith in, in those very differing circumstances? Well, life is much more complicated because we're inundated by so much data, so much information. The world is much smaller. But the art of a good pastor is being able to minister to the whole of a diverse flock. And I think that's what they're looking for right now, a pastor, a father who can treat his children uh, both as individuals and yet call them to a common standard. And the Pope also would need to have a sense of a world that's ever more technologically and scientifically complex. Yes, and in, in that regard, he's going to have to depend on the advice of experts. The Pontifical Academy of Science, for instance, uh, brings experts in from all over the world to do precisely that. A big, difficult choice before these men. Enormous, enormous. Father Robert Sirico, thank you very much indeed. And now, back to you in London.